Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 805, a bit of a different and slightly shorter show this week. Uh, we couldn't get the schedules to work too well this week, so rather than not doing a show at all, I thought I'd do an update on what's happening this week with uh, some interesting stuff. We've got builds, we've got new builds of Windows 10, uh, some Surface Duo news and some other stuff, so I wanted to make sure I uh, brief you on those and then we'll get back, back to our regular show next week. So let's get straight to this week's show, 8.05. Hey, so welcome to show 8.05. And um, yeah, I wanted to do a short update show for you this week. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was Build. Build was um, kicked off. It's Microsoft's big developer event kicked off this week with a key- keynote by Satya Nadella yesterday. Um, there wasn't a huge lot of things for consumers like us. It's obviously it's aimed at developers. And uh, next week, Gary can talk about uh, some of the developer news on there. There's some of the Power Automate and the Power Platform. It's looking really interesting, actually, and uh, I do use that in my day job as well. But we'll talk about that with a bit more detail next week. Um, apart from what was interesting on the Satya Nadella's backdrop that he had, with, and I noticed there was a, a Sinclair ZX80 on there as well, some other interesting stuff, but uh, a ZX80 right back to the uh, early days. I've got a ZX81 on the shelf over there somewhere, uh, but not a ZX80. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of talks about actual Windows itself, but we did get a bit of a hint on what's coming soon as well. Um and I've got the exact quote, and Satya said, soon we'll share one of the most significant updates to Windows of the past decade to unlock greater economic opportunity for developers and creators. I've been self-hosting it for the past several months, and I'm incredibly excited about the next generation of Windows. Our promise to you is this, we will create more opportunities for every developer today and welcome every creator who's looking for the most innovative new open platform to distribute and build uh, modern uh, monetized applications and we we'll look forward to sharing more soon so there's a few interesting uh, pieces on that worth looking at um first of all i think most importantly it says the next generation of windows it doesn't say next generation of windows 10 you never mentioned the 10 or it does, obviously it doesn't talk about 10x because we know that that's been scrapped but Windows 10 is definitely um, not mentioned. It's just Windows. So whether we'll see a change, um, that will be interesting if that happens. I, maybe some will see something like it just being called Windows 10, or so just called Windows rather than Windows 10 and dropping the, the product number off there because I suppose the way that we'll, Windows is working now is just updated as a service and um, it's being constantly updated. And it's really, is this going to be Windows 11? No, I don't think so. So maybe Windows 10 and just keep updating that Windows 10 platform. Or maybe it should be just Windows, Windows 10, and they'll keep updating that platform. So that would be interesting to see. And uh, uh, I think that would be an interesting marketing thing, especially as they cancel Windows 10X. So they can kind of say, well, it's just Windows now. No 10 or 9 or 8 or anything else, just Windows. Um, or maybe they'll go with the year and call it Windows 2021, uh, going back to how we had uh, Windows 2000, Windows 95, Windows 98. I don't know. But um, yeah, I've got a feeling something new's coming from it. I don't have any inside information, but I've got a feeling something's different coming around the naming. Uh, the, the reference to uh, greater economic opportunity for developers and creators, I think that's referring to the rumours of the Windows Store being opened up for any applications with different backends, different payment platforms, developers' own payment platforms, developers' own content distribution network. So you'll see things like Chrome going in there, and there, is, there won't be the kind of uh, Windows Store that we've got now, the Microsoft Store, where you have to submit an app and it goes through approval process. I think we'll just be able to put apps straight in there, um, Firefox or whatever, we'll just be able to go straight in there. It doesn't have to be UWP, just be a desktop app with a maybe a, a Windows install or without an install, just a simple uh, update going straight in there. So that will mean there's more opportunities for developers to be able to, to get applications in. And I think they're trying to make it an open platform to put as many things in there as possible, um, which will be interesting to see as well as a change of philosophy. Let's face it, the, the Microsoft Store is not particularly successful at the moment anyway. So making a change is probably not that much of a risk. Um, 
and that might be bring more applications to Windows and make it the, the best platform for every application. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm guessing that's what he's talking about. Um, and uh, as, as he's mentioned, uh, we look forward to sharing more soon. And I, I suspect that will be a special Windows event and uh, we will find out more about it then. Uh, maybe soon. I don't know. But uh, it would certainly be um, it would certainly be a big change uh, with all the new UI stuff that's coming through as well as the store stuff. So I think we'll see perhaps a slight rebranding. We'll see a new user interface that's you know, a bit familiar but based perhaps on some of the things learned from Windows 10 X, certainly the um, Sun Valley rumor is that it's going to have a new uh, user or a polished user interface. So maybe we'll see that along with the new store. And those are the three things that will be the big push for Windows in 2021. It certainly won't be 10 X as we as we talked about previously. That's that's gone now. Um, so I hope we'll find out some more soon, uh, sooner the better, because uh, I'd like to find out a bit more because these builds of Windows 10 we're getting for the Windows Insider program have been relatively uh, small and light on features. At, and uh, last week we got, so last week we got a, a new build for Windows Insiders 21387. And this is going back to what I'm saying. We've not had many changes to Windows 10 recently, and I think that's, they're being saved up for this big release. But one significant thing that uh, 21387 did have is the removal of Internet Explorer. So um, on my machine here, I could start typing uh, Internet Explorer and it would fire up on there. But there you go, Internet Explorer. But if I did that on my other machine, which is running the Windows Insider preview builds, then it doesn't show up at all. So enterprises can still manage it through IE mode, that kind of thing. But for consumers, IE is gone, which I think is not a bad thing. Um, there are some things that still want compatibility, but I think they're all business stuff and not consumer stuff. So um, that's it, really. So that was the real change in the bill last week, um, sort of sneaked out on Friday evening in UK time. So I did get a video of that and uh, you can watch that on our YouTube channel. I've got it on here as well. So we're still on this CO release branch. Um, so the branches are the different um, repositories for Windows development. So the CO one seems to be the boring one where not many changes. And I think perhaps uh, we, when we go back to RS pre-releases, which, which we're normally on, that's where all the exciting new features will, get, will be. And it could be, this uh, one theory I have is that all, all the new exciting shiny stuff is in RS pre-release. So what will happen is Microsoft would have an event at some point, talk about the new things, and then we get the build after that which would have some of the, the shiny stuff in there. But I'm thinking that may, maybe they don't want to uh, put us on RS pre-release until those new features are there. So it doesn't, having said that, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the case because they can turn on and off, new, on and off features, even UI features um, through um, sort of remote setup and, and not doesn't have to be in a new build. So they could just, you, you know, all these new shiny bits could be in here and they can just release a config file and that'll be, be on there. But I don't think that is the case. I think they're going to take it away because people have a tendency of finding them as well. That's the other problem. People dive through the, the code and manage to find them. So uh, that's why we're getting these uh, pre-releases of these uh, CO releases and yes, they're pretty boring as well. And while we're on that, as we're recording this on Wednesday evening, while we normally call it on Tuesday evening, we did get 21390 for Windows Insiders and the Dev Channel. It's just currently installing on my uh, Surface Go over here here at the moment. So we'll have a video out for that soon. But uh, the changes on that are, again, fairly minor. Improve iconography, improvements to Task Manager and MSI installers. And yeah, that's it. Um, and you can also set Windows Terminal as your default uh, terminal terminal preview. I actually do use that. I really like Windows Terminal. I've got mine set up quite nicely. I've got all different uh, UI versions. So I've got like Power. I've got uh, let's see. I've actually got three on this machine. On my other machine, I've got some all different colored ones, and I've got sort of classic mode one with the uh, and I've got the old style one. I've got mod ones. So I do like using uh, that. So. Um, 
that's good that you can make that default and the rest of the changes are all fairly minor there's plenty of fixes in there but only the three known issues but i said i'll do a separate build video on that uh, will be available probably by the time this podcast is live the other th thing that we got last week was another update to 20h2 20h1 um which was uh, a, just a KB that, with a load of updates for. So my uh, machine really is ready for 20H1 now. I might uh, might put that on here. Uh, 20H1 is the new update for the May uh, 2021 update. There's very minor changes. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago on the show. I actually got a separate video on, on that as well, if you wanted to check it out. But yeah, we have talked about that one many times. A couple of more interesting things I wanted to briefly mention this week as well. We've got something um, from Qualcomm for Windows 10, a, a Qualcomm Windows 10 on ARM developer kit kind of announced. I think Qualcomm probably jumped the gun and it was out pre-build, but uh, uh, yeah, it means that there is a extra set of tools for Windows, and de uh, Windows developers wanting to do desktop apps for Windows 10 on ARM, which is quite interesting. So we'll find out a bit more from Gary and Richard about that next week and, and why they broke their own embargo. The other thing I wanted to mention as well is around the Surface Duo. So the Surface Duo, you know, many long term listeners know I love this device. Uh, I don't do any gaming on it really, but I did record a video last year of how you can use this for gaming using it in sort of say like mini laptop mode and you can um, and I use it with the Xbox controller and it worked really well actually you can have the Xbox app on here but Microsoft have released an update if you run in the um, X Cloud the, the previous the games the streaming of uh, Xbox live games on your, on your on your surface and they've enabled the uh, controls on the dual screen mode it should have this should have been there originally so the, I haven't got the uh, cloud subscription for Xbox games, uh, Xbox Game Pass installed on here. Oh, I haven't got to get Xbox Game Pass anymore. But basically what it means is, is that you have the game on there and the controls. So you can use this as a mini handheld Xbox controller, which seems a, a fantastic idea. It's not enough for me to kind of bother to get the subscription, to be honest, because I don't do that many gaming. But a really nice idea, and uh, it'd be nice if they could do a little bit more to highlight the dual screen features of uh, the Surface Duo. I know that Richard is concerned that they don't talk about it very much. So it's nice to see something something new on there as well, because uh, it's certainly um, gone pretty quiet on there. There was one session of building this week about the dual screen uh, devices. So um, hopefully that doesn't mean the... You know, that they won't do a version two. I suspect they will, but uh, you never know. The other thing I wanted to mention as well this week is um, I, I taught last week, I showed off that um, a USB powered hub, and um, I've been playing around with that this week, so I just wanted to share you how that's been working. I did record a, a video on that, so I can, uh, I can show you what I mean, but uh, yeah, that's. This is the, the USB hub. It's just behind my desk here, so I won't mess the camera in because it'll make you feel seasick as I move the camera around. But it's an aluminium device uh, that uh, all lights up uh, as each device is plugged in. And I've got it plugged into their uh, audio mixer, uh, multiple MIDI interfaces, a few synthesizers. I've got a keyboard on there, a key lock for the music software. I've got a cable that I'm using for charging the HoloLens and charge my watch as well so this one device uh, that was 35.95 has meant i've got rid of loads of usb splitters hanging off usb splitters that were unreliable and especially when the midi interface or the audio interface dropped off it would sort of crash the application the music program so it was getting really frustrating so this solves that by just being one device you plug in and connect everything together and like i said i've done a, a little video of that as you can see see there but uh, so far so good next thing i've got is a to do is a little midi interface that i'm uh, going to be testing next that's usb again uh, usb again and uh, nice and cheap as well so i should be able to report back on that next week the other thing i want to report back on is i did get the uh, roland drum machine all cleaned up all the pen uh, markings that have gone off there now so it's all uh, nice and clean now and um, 
ready to go. So um, I'm going to use it for some tracks fairly soon. But yeah, it works great. So this is a 1986 era, era drum machine. So I've got it midded up and uh, I can use it in some of my tracks drum machine, which is exactly what I, I'm into doing the music at the moment. So uh, all cleaned up, uh, I mentioned last week. I think Richard said he wanted less than drum machines, but we'll save that for next week. So that's our quick roundup of news for this week. Uh, I said not a full show, but I did want to go through some of the news uh, from the week. We'll be back with our same uh, regular show next week. You can email me in at logisticslifestyle.com and at iStix on Twitter. And it would be nice to have a bit of feedback, actually. We don't have any feedback for some while. So if you want to let us know what you like, what you don't like about the show, what we think we could improve or change, please let me know. Um, we do it because of listeners like you. So it'd be great to get some feedback and let us know what you think. So thanks for watching this video and uh, listening to this podcast. And we'll see you next week. Bye.